Good evening, friends. Stephen Burnett with Israeli News Live. And tonight, we are going to get into the very real possibility that the war that has started in Ukraine is about to spread outside of its borders. And it may include Poland and Romania, Moldova, who is also right in the middle. You're going to find out exactly why Putin actually went into Ukraine when he did just so happens that Ukraine and NATO had already planned an attack that would take back the eastern part of the country, Luhansk and Donetsk. The two republics, the breakaway republics that have, for the last eight years, have lived in tyranny underneath the neo-Nazi fascist government of Ukraine, headed by Zelensky now. Yeah, I know it's kind of hard to believe. You'd think a Jewish guy wouldn't want a neo-Nazi government. But then again, Hitler was surrounded by Jewish people all in his cabinet, all the while while they were killing the real Jewish people during the Holocaust. That's why books like Holocaust Victims Accused expose the Zionist, elitist conspiracy. What a mess that is, right? All right, here, let's take a first. Before I get into what's really going on and why Putin actually went into Ukraine, I want to share with you here on Yahoo News here. NATO's Article 5 could pull the U.S. and its allies further into the Russian-Ukraine conflict, right? Well, it says here, President Joe Biden repeatedly has said the United States will not be sending troops to fight Russia and Ukraine, but vowed that the U.S. would defend its NATO allies. As I made crystal clear, the United States will defend every inch of NATO territory with the full force of American power, he reiterated in an address on Thursday. Amid the current crisis, Article 5 could mandate a more direct response from the U.S. and other treaty members in the Russian aggression escalates beyond Ukraine, he states, or at least it's written here. NATO announced last week it launched its response force, a deployment of about 40,000 troops to provide land, air, naval assistance across the alliance. This is the first time the force has been deployed for a deterrence and defense role, a NATO spokesman, uh, spokesperson said. Well, you know, I did a little looking because I got a very interesting email from a good friend over in Israel. And in that email, he was speaking about uh, the, the Israeli intelligence had really basically kind of screwed things up, so to speak, pardon the expression, and they didn't realize that Russia was going in when they did. The Ministry of Defense rejected the criticism that the hesitant policy of Prime Minister Naftali Bennett and Foreign Minister Yair Lapid stemmed from a lack of intelligence on tensions between Russia and Ukraine. Israel does not gather intelligence on Russia, they claim. Well, we know that's a lie, right? The source also said that despite the gaps in intelligence about what was happening a week before the invasion, they had already asked Israeli citizens to evacuate Ukraine. Anytime Israel goes to telling people to evacuate, they know what's coming. Notice what it says in the last paragraph right here, right? This is, this is the kicker. In addition, Defense Ministry officials updated the political echelon that despite the operational preparations to evacuate Israeli citizens from Ukraine soil, IDF and foreign ministry planning teams are currently changing the operation preparations to evacuate Israeli citizens from Poland and Romania. Well, sounds like those are going to be the next two nations that are going to be at war with Russia. And then Joe Biden will have just exactly what he wanted. Get us involved in another war. Well, you know, that's because they want the new world order. Oh, my gosh, friends. All right, let's take a look. Seriously. There was an article that I picked up on after I started seeing what was going on in this Romania and Poland, I began to look around and I found an amazing author on VK News. And it's actually, I'll share with you who that is. Let me see if I got him up here. Uh, nope. Oh, by the way, that is this. <laughs> People were saying, no, the Russia never sunk the pride of Ukraine. Oh, no, they didn't sink that pride of Ukraine. The Hitman Sahaya Dakani. Yeah, it was hit. It was destroyed. Don't worry. Yep, it went down. So, yep, destroyed. 
Anyway, though, what I'm actually looking for, though, and I don't have it up there. I can see it already. I don't have it up there. I was going to share with you the author of this. Uh, I will try to bring that a little bit later. But this is what he wrote on VK. VK is a kind of like a Facebook for Russia. Since December, Russia has been receiving information about NATO plans to deploy four military brigades. Um, two, let's see, two land, two, or one sea and one air on territory of Ukraine. Moreover, an air brigade with the ability to carry out nuclear warheads. NATO wanted to agree on this deployment of troops in the summer of 2022, a meeting of the UN Security Council, then most likely by the end of the year. They would have provoked a conflict and launched full-scale military operations against us with the use of nuclear weapons. Those NATO planned unleash World War III with the, the use of nuclear weapons against Russia. The key role in this was given to the current American-controlled ruling elite in Ukraine and the nationalists. In order to prevent World War III, an attack on Russia using nuclear weapons, the government decided to stop this situation and restore order. All right. The West presses information through social networks and other things that Russia has attacked that are offended that their plans were destroyed and now Russia cannot be destroyed by nuclear weapons that are in Ukraine and at the expense of Ukraine by the way what Putin said the time for the warheads to fly from Kharkov to Moscow is three minutes there is no time for retaliatory strike from USA at 30 minutes have time to answer only today it became possible to publish intelligence data on the preparation of the provocations followed by the treacherous strike with the destruction of the population on the territory of the LPR and the DPR. That's Luhansk Republics and the Donetsk Republics, a time out of eastern uh, of Ukraine there. Putin was ahead of Ukraine and NATO and actually saved hundreds of thousands of lives in the republics. A day before the start of the war, fateful decisions were made to exterminate the Russian-speaking population in Donbass. Now, Donbass actually covers both those areas. Now, let me just quickly take you over here to the uh, Google Maps here. Uh, where do I have it here? So you can kind of see what I'm talking about. All right, here we are right here. This is Ukraine. There's Luhansk right there. Donetsk is right there. And so this whole region right here is considered to be Donbass. Now, What's interesting, what you may not know, and I know this from a friend of mine that actually has a company there in Ukraine, that Ukraine has made it illegal to speak the Russian language in this nation. Talk about tyranny that these poor people are under, right? So at any rate there, at any rate, and also if you remember, I'd, I'd shared with you guys intelligence a little while back, and maybe that's over on, only on Patreon, I forget for sure now if it is or is not, but... No, I think we actually did it here on the news. The, the, when, when Biden had went over there, I was given some information how that they were already pushing the Ukrainians to attack and to bring troops up against Russia. In fact, when the Russians had brought like, what is 100,000 troops on the border and I told you they would stand down and they would actually go back away from the border, they did. Because I also knew that that was only provoking, but it wasn't the time yet. But I didn't know that they had actually planned this war. Watch what we read here. The West presses information. We already read that about through social media. All right. Only today it became possible to publish the intelligence data. Right. We got that too as well. Putin was ahead of Ukraine and NATO and actually saved hundreds of thousands of lives in the Republic. A day before the start of the war, fateful decisions were made to exterminate the Russian-speaking population in Donbass. The Ukrainian army under the leadership of the National Battalions, was preparing to start military operations in Donbass on February the 25th of 2022. Vladimir Putin was literally a day ahead of the plans of Kiev and the West, which made it possible to seize the strategic initiative. About a week before the start of the Russian special operations, Edward Basuran reported on a map of the attack on the Donbass that was intercepted from the armed forces of Ukraine. It was clearly laid out there were there there excuse me clearly laid out there when long range artillery strikes would be delivered when MLRS when by aviation then strikes by the operational tactical group OTG respectively north and south and east. 
OTG Vostok was supposed to act on the dissect, uh, dissection of Donetsk and Luhansk. They were given three days to reach the border, and the OTG and YUG would act together with the uh, Adrafasti, which according to the plan were supposed to play the role of detachment. In the north, where Luhansk, the armed forces of Ukraine, were supposed to operate under the cover of the right sector, they were supposed to meet in the uh, Kosmolovsk region south of Donetsk and cut off the uh, LDNR from the border with Russia. Within two days, it was planned to begin a complete cleansing. Moreover, the Donetsk, Luhansk, and several other cities did not plan to capture at this stage, but simply surrounded and blocked. That is, a complete blockade of settlement was em em emphasized before a complete cleansing. That sounds like another neo-Nazi tactic, doesn't it? There is a conviction that this plan was deployed jointly with NATO curators because the Americans previously transferred about 5,000 of their soldiers to Poland. Plus, there was also the Polish army, according to the plan, they were supposed to block our Kaliningrad grouping so that in which case it could not advance to attack the territory of southeast Ukraine. All right, well, look at that real quick just so you can see what we're talking about there, right? So what would he be talking about here? Kaliningrad is right here. All right, there's Kaliningrad. There's, there's that little territory that Russia has right there in the heart of Europe. Poland there, they put the troops there. So those troops could not make it across to Belarus to get into Ukraine to be able to help anything. Make sense? The second grouping is a thousand soldiers of the Stryker Brigade, armored vehicles in Romania. This grouping blockaded uh, Transnistria so that the peacekeeper stationed there would not be able to advance to the south of Ode to Odessa. And if you look at that, there you go right there. There's Romania there. They would not be able to get to Odessa. Let's take a quick look back then at Google Maps for that one there. There you go. So they would block them there so they couldn't reach Odessa to do any, do any good there either. So th they were really... NATO and the Ukrainians were working very fervently to wipe out the eastern part of Ukraine. It was all a single set of actions that were to begin on the night of February 24th, 25th. In fact, the actions of the armed forces of Ukraine were only one day ahead of them. Why are they so hysterical? Because everything was ready to seize the territory and then suddenly one day earlier, Units of the LPR and the DPR began to actively operate with the support of the Russian Federation Armed Forces. First of all, airfields, runways were attacked so that it was impossible to land transport aircraft with weapons from the United States and other countries. Command posts, air defense systems, radar stations, anti-aircraft missile divisions, etc. were disabled. The People's Militia of the LDNR, with the support of our artillery and high-precision weapons, launched an, uh, uh, an offensive against Vostok Group. And that is what saved the day for the people of eastern Ukraine. This is the story, friends, that's not being told in the news. This is what they don't want you to know. And I find that interesting. By the way, Kadrov asked Putin to order the capture of Kharkov and Kiev. I thought it was interesting. I've been seeing a lot of um, uh, <laughs> media saying that, oh, he backed down and is not going to help Putin fight against uh, the Ukrainians there. He said, the head of the Chechen Republic, Ramzan Kadrov, has published an appeal to the Russian President Vladimir Putin. He asked to give an order to take the major cities of Ukraine. Kadrov believes that the fighters should be given the opportunity to fully express themselves. Then they will be able to apply every possible and impossible force in order to complete the operation. So the Chechens are definitely going to be going in if they haven't already gone in uh, to be part of this battle here. Also, you guys, I'm sure you're already fully aware by now, fierce fighting has sparked fires outside the Ukrainian nuclear plant. And by the way, that's one of the largest, it's the largest nuclear plant in all of Europe. I think it's got, was it five units there or four? I forget exactly. I think it's five units, nuclear power units there. So, uh, all right, let's, let me take you over here to, um, 
VK. Uh, this guy right here is called Putin's Pike. This is the uh, the one that I was telling you about there on on uh, VK. Uh, dot com there. It's called Putin's Pike. That's what it says in Russian right there. And uh, this is where I actually got the writing that this guy posted here. Very, very, as, well, as you just heard, very insightful, very insightful. That was posted about an hour ago. And, uh, and he does other writings as well there. But uh, that was very insightful what he wrote there. And lets us know what really was going on. Of course, I mean, there's people that say it's propaganda. But you know, look, it supports what the article supports are many things that I was already getting from American intelligence. And then on top of it, let me let me just share some other things with you, right? On top of it. All right. And on top of that, you have, for example, here through Israeli intelligence, Putin is not going to accept it. I don't think Russia will not tolerate and allow this U.S. London NATO push. We will see what happens. Putin is not a nice guy, but I like him better than our U.S. politicians. I believe Putin invaded Ukraine for many reasons and dis dismantled bad people and bad operations. Also for Putin to control and save pipelines that Russia is involved with. Ukraine is owned by the elites, globalists, and totally corrupt. I feel bad for the people of Ukraine and the Russian soldiers both. So sad. It's going to get really bad, uh, badly, and I do not blame Putin for uh, basically for, for, for what he did is what he's saying right here. At any rate, uh, I'm Stephen Benu. You're watching Israeli News Live. I wanted to update you and let you know what's really going on in Ukraine. And this is about to get much bigger, much broader. And as a result of what Putin Spike wrote on there, I can certainly see that we're going to end up in a situation uh, with Russia whether it's Russia strikes the, the, these positions in Poland and Romania or NATO basically forces Russia's hand. So this is going to get much worse, much uglier, much quicker. And well, we'll go into that later. I'm Stephen Badoon. You're watching Israeli News Live. Thank you for listening and have a good evening.